It is time to answer your Christopher? Christopher? Is my volume not up? Christopher? No, I don't hear. You don't hear Christopher? No, I don't hear Christopher. Nobody hears Christopher? Huh. Let's go to Saeed in Arlington, Virginia. Saeed. And nobody hears Saeed either. Isn't that wonderful? Let's, uh, let's try again now. Christopher? 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 We're having a volume issue because I'm hearing myself in a loop She's in my ear. It sounds far. In my ear. Hello, Christopher? Yes, I'm here. Ah, there we go. Christopher, how are you? How are you, Brad? Good. What's going like on? your show. Thank you. Yes, Brad. I have a question. Um, my wife recently um, got her immigrant visa, but the problem is... Um, our two-year anniversary will be in a couple, of, like a month from now. Is it best she comes to the U.S. after her two-year anniversary? That would be a smart thing, because then she would get a permanent green card. Okay, so just let you, let her wait until as long the as the immigrant as long as the immigrant visa is still valid when she enters. If she enters the United States after the second year anniversary, she'll be a ten-year green card, never have to go through the process again. That'd be a smart. Thing. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Yes. I'll just wait until it's exactly. here. Exactly. So, no, what I'm saying, can I? Is it okay to come even two days after it? Yes. After it. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Love your show. Thank you. All right. Let's go to Maxine in Hartford. Maxine. Hi, Brad. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. I have a question for yes. you. I have a friend. Um, she's getting um benefit from the states. Um, she got married recently, so she wants to know if she's going to lose her benefit, even the health insurance, the what, what kind of Medicaid. Benefit? I don't know what, she's getting Medicaid? Yes, and um, she get like food stamps for the kids and Medicaid for herself and the kids. Okay, so she's not going to lose anything unless she decides to. Uh, but if she's getting Medicaid for herself and the kids, she's going to have yeah. a hard time sponsoring her husband. Even if she gets off it now, Based on the new rules, if you're on it at any time for the last three years, uh, for mm -hmm. yourself as an adult, it mm -hmm. is a big, big negative against you. If it's for your children, it has no effect. So the food stamps and Medicaid for children are fine. For her, it's a huge, huge no-no. She should get off for herself as quickly as possible. The longer she's on, the more negative it goes against her, her case. And it's at any time in the last three years. So she's going to have a problem. Get off as quickly as possible for herself. Uh, because the Medicaid is up now and she want to renew it tomorrow. So she wants to know if, it will, if they will deny her. If she is getting Medicaid, again, mm -hmm. I'll answer the question again. Maybe you didn't understand the first time around. She can get mm -hmm. Medicaid all she wants. She's entitled to yes. it if she has a green card. Okay, yes. so if she's entitled to it, she's entitled to it. The fact that she's married or not married would only, mm -hmm. it would only affect as if, I guess, the husband has some sort of huge income that would affect her qualifications for Medicaid. I'm not an expert in Medicaid. I know a lot about immigration. So what I was saying mm -hmm. is her renewing her Medicaid, they'll renew it. It's not a problem. She's entitled to it because she has a green card. However, yes. if she's getting Medicaid for herself... Mm -hmm and wants mm -hmm. to file for this husband, she will have mm -hmm. a hard time getting the husband a green card. Oh, wow. Oh, she said she's gonna come off it as soon as possible. But the longer <laughs> she's on it, then, you know, she's husband's not yes, getting a green sorry. card. And just because she yeah. gets off of it, under the new mm -hmm. rules, doesn't mean, okay, mm -hmm. now I'm off of it, I can file for my husband. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to mm -hmm. see if you are on it for any period of time in the last three years, it's a double negative against you. Wow. All right. Thank you so much, right. brother. Okay. Thanks. Let's go to Peter in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Peter. Peter. Hello. Hi, Peter. How are you? I'm good. Yes, Uncle Brad. Listen, yes. um, 
my wife fired from a crusade um, back home in Jamaica. Uh-huh. They went on the interview. And um, however, first, my wife of Section 8. And then they turn it on because of the section. Correct. Eight. Correct. It's all new reality now, folks. If you're getting government assistance, that is a huge negative against you. And even if she was to get off Section 8, it's held against you for three years. The new form, the new affidavit of support form, they mm -hmm. estimate the average person. It will take them five and a half hours to complete the new affidavit of support form. So if you think that you're going to fill out a form in 20 minutes or 30 minutes, I looked at the form today, as a matter of fact. It's worse than filing for a mortgage. If you've ever filed for a mortgage and said, oh my God, what do I have to submit for a mortgage? This is worse. Right, that's a lot of signatures, right. Not signatures, documents. And if you just say, I'm on Section 8 and do nothing else, you're getting denied. Why? Because Section 8 is a negative. If you have a negative, you've got to come in with two positives. And if you didn't come in with two positives on that form, denial. I would suggest you come in for a consultation. I don't know what to tell you. I've got to see what you submitted. But so everyone. Uncle Brad. Yes. So it, it don't make no sense she come off it. I didn't say that. I said... I said that she comes off of it, it's still a negative against her for three years. Okay. All right. I don't have the answer to tell you makes sense, doesn't make sense, till I see all of your financial documentation. The okay. longer you're on it, the worse it is if you want to refile again for your children. I don't know whether or not it's worth it. I don't want anyone to be homeless. And maybe it's past the point now of being helped for your children. We'll have to figure out a different way for your children. Or maybe if she does get off it, we can cobble together enough document, positive documentation to show that, um, that they can get through. I don't have the answer until I meet with you. Oh, okay. All right, but it's a problem for a lot of people now who get Section 8. It's a problem for people who have uh, any sort of government assistance for filing for their family. Okay, right, thank hold you. On. Hold on. Let's go to Adam in Somerset, New Jersey. Adam. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Me, Uncle Brown. What's going on? Um, I have two questions for you. I refile for my kids. So how long can I wait for them to prove? I have no idea. What is your status here? Where are your kids? How old are your kids? Yeah, I was with you last month for my three kids. I don't know anything about your case off the top of my head. You're my client? Yes. Okay, then hold on. Let's talk off the air. I don't, I don't know off the top of your head. If you're my client, there's no reason to call on the phone. Let's go to Youssef in Cleveland, Ohio. Youssef. Uh, hi, uh, but, uh, Uncle Brad. How are you today? Good, good. How are you? Uh, well, thank you for asking. I'm, I'm fine. This is my second time, and I'm very happy and glad that you came back. I've been waiting for you. Okay. What can I do now? Uh, so, uh, thank you so much, sir. I have a couple of questions, like three questions. Is that okay? Go ahead. So my first question is, I moved from California to Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio because I got a scholarship in Ohio, and then I changed my address uh, because I have two cases pending right now. One, uh, one of my cases uh, that I use uh, citizenship. Another one is uh, the I-130, and I'm still waiting for that one. Uh, that it's been pending. So my question is, do I have to get a new driver license or a state ID from Ohio because I don't have one from Ohio? And the reason I'm asking that is because I have uh, I got my interview for, for my citizenship in the uh, next, like, Next twenty days. Yeah, you should uh, you should apply for a new driver's license. You should show you live in Ohio if you moved to Ohio and your case for citizenship is in Ohio. Okay, thank thank you so much for that. So, uh, just another question, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, when I become a CU citizen, uh, will that help my uh, my uh, the form one uh, one three zero to get my wife uh, somehow like help her out to get here? Of course, it will. It, it'll upgrade the case from uh, uh, F two A to an immediate relative. 
Okay, well, thank you so much, right. Uncle Brad. Just the last question, yes. is that okay? Last sure, question. Go ahead. So I haven't applied, I haven't uh, filed my taxes for 2019 yet, but I know that I have uh, uh, until April 15. Correct. But should I have, like, should I go and, uh, you know, uh, file it because uh, I'm in school and no, now. No, you don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't need 2019 taxes for your citizenship interview in 20 days because they're not due until April 15th. So you don't have to race to file it for citizenship. Okay, thank you so much. You're Just welcome. the last question, uh, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm also on Medicaid. Sorry, I'm asking a lot of questions. This is my, but this is my last question. I'm also on Medicaid. You're, gonna have, you're not going to have a problem becoming a citizen. You're going to have a problem getting your wife here if you're on Medicaid. Unless it's, oh, okay. unless it's for an emergency, but it doesn't sound like you're in an emergency situation at this moment. No, it's not. It's just for, uh, like, I, because I'm in school right now and, and, and I need it. Then, well, you, you, well you, you are going to be a healthy person. This is the sad thing, what Donald Trump says. You want to be a healthy person. You can't afford health insurance, so you ask the government for Medicaid, and they say, okay, you'll live. You'll, be, you'll, have, you'll have some health care, but in return, uh, you can't be reunited with your family. It's a big problem. you got to choose. And the longer you're on Medicaid, the harder it's going to be to get your wife here. Okay, so if I just uh, so if I just get it off, uh, it's, off my you still account, have a problem for three that... more years. Wow, so I wouldn't be able to bring my wife I'm in. Not, even I'm, if not I become saying, I'm not saying. Citizen? I'm not saying. Even if you become a U.S. citizen, I'm not saying you won't get your wife here. I'm saying it is a huge problem against you for three years. So will that kind of like affect my case? My one I zero rate three zero. <laughs> If you understand the words coming out of my mouth, yes. Uh, well, okay. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you need you a so consultation. Much, Hold on. Let's go to Maria in Atlanta, Georgia. Maria. Hey, Brad. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. What's going on? I'm a J1. Uh? No. What's going on? I'm a J1 student, and my fiance he had a record in the past, like a gun charge. Uh huh. But it's now cleared. Can we still get married? Yes. Okay. All right. That's fast enough. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's go to Mustafa in Glen Ellen, Illinois. Hello. How are you? Hi, uh, Brad. Pleasure to talk to you. Yes. So um, I have a question. Um, I came to the U.S. in 2016 and uh, on an F-1 visa, and I went back towards the end of 2017 and came back again um, and I went out of status February of 2018 and I've been out of status ever since then and um, I'm currently engaged right now to my fiance we haven't fixed the date yet for the wedding but with this whole ban with Nigeria and all that I was just trying it to figure out what that the, affect the hold me. only affects people who are immigrating from Nigeria it does not affect adjustment of status with that oh, okay. said Go get married. Don't stay out of status. Stop, okay. stop, stop fakakta-ing around saying, oh, I don't know where I'll get married. Go get married. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Let's go to Jose in Santa Ana, California. Jose. Hello, Mr. Ralph. How are you uh, doing? How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, I had a question for you. Um, uh, we sent a package for VIWA a couple of years ago. I have an attorney. Uh, when he sent the package, I have uh, an appointment for my fingerprint, which is uh, a year ago. I never went to get the fingerprints because I really don't want to proceed with, with the case because I spoke to two different attorneys after the, my attorney sent the package, and they told me that it's a very weak case. You have no chance since there is no police report. Um, now, um, they, I, uh, I was approved by uh, Prima Facie, which had expired uh, two weeks ago. Uh, I was hoping that they will abandon the case. So they won't take a look at that anymore because they have a bad record. I was, I, I, the question is... Jose, uh, Jose, <laughs> what kind of dumb lawyers are you going to that you're, just because you don't have a police report doesn't mean there was not domestic violence. And the fact that you have a prima facie determination means immigration thinks you got a pretty good case. So why wouldn't you complete it? Uh, because, like I said, I have... I guess uh, you, went to, a, you, went, you went to dumb lawyers. Um, okay. Is your adjustment still pending? Do you know if it's still pending? I, I, I took, yeah, it's, it's still pending. Okay, so, I then, haven't this, taken, so taken, then, uh, then this is what you do. Go down to immigration, the place where you're supposed to get fingerprinted, bring the notice, go get fingerprinted. Even if it's like a year ago? Even, as long as your case is pending, they'll still fingerprint you. 
Okay, uh, I don't want to take more your time, but what about if they abandon my case? Will I t do you think I can get re reported because if they deny it, since yes. I've been having a bad record? Yes. It, okay. it makes no sense to file an application, especially one that got a prima facie determination, and not complete it. Because you either complete it and you get approved or denied, or you don't complete it, and then you've already, you're getting denied. You always might as well try to get it approved. Okay. All right. And, and I think right. you Thank need, you. And, and by the way, I think you got to use your brain. You used your brain to call this, to call me. Now use your brain again to hold on and have a consultation with me. Let's take a look at your case. Hold on. Let's go to Tony in Norwalk. Tony. Hello, Brad. How, How are you? How are you doing? I'm very well. Just two questions briefly. Yes. Um, can a green card holder sponsor his spouse? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, secondly, um, can a victim of um, burglary crime who has suffered a kind of... Um, psychological, emotional um, trauma, you know, we qualify for a, a, um, a visa. Yes, if there was, uh, if there, you have to have, you have to, if you are the, if you are qualify for a U visa and you are the victim of a crime, you have to show that you have an injury. The injury could be physical, it could be emotional. Okay, good. And um, last question. Uh, my friend, she applied for asylum and she's in removal proceedings. However, she has um, evidences, witness letters, police records, news articles of her case. She has a country respect. But um, with the visa in Nigeria, does she start a chance to win her case? I have no idea. You're asking me that you just gave me a list of documents she submitted with her asylum. Will she win her case? Well, how would I, I don't have the slightest idea. She would need to have a consultation with me. I would have to review what she submitted and re review her claim. So hold on one second. Let's go to Ra Raj in Washington, D.C. Raj. Hi, Brad. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Brad, I just want to say I love you. I love Yo-Yo. I love Kimmy Kim Kim. I want to be a part of the Brad Squad. Okay. You guys. Well, all, all you got to do to become part of the Brad Squad. And by the way, uh, it's it's uh, Nesquik, Vanessa Contreras. Hey, I love you, though. All right. <laughs> Vanessa, I'm, I'm, Raj, I'm, I'm sorry, Raj, brother. Raj doesn't love you. It's okay. Okay. Uh, you're, you're the best looking one of the group. It's okay, Raj. I forgive you. All right. I mean, you got to love the best looking one of the group here. All right, Raj. It's okay. This is, how, this is how you become part of the Brad Squad. It's very simple. Go to our Facebook page. There's a membership section. And in the membership section for to become part of the Brad Squad, you request to become a member. And then, Great. And then Nesquik, who you just didn't say hello to. Hi, Nesquik. Hey there. All right. Let's go to... Christine in the Bronx. Christine. Hello. Good How evening, Brad. Yeah. Um, I have a few questions here for you. My yes. daughter filed for me, and I'm here in the Bronx waiting to get my green card. Yes. I'm asking, oh, soon I got my green card. I have two children in Jamaica. One is 17, one is 13. How oh, soon can I file for these are, you have a green card and you want to file for children, file for them right now, today. Okay, and um, can I put my husband on it? You would file separate I-130 for your husband, separate I-130s for each of your children. And the reason is, is that if you were to become a citizen, your children would fall off uh, the case if you were to file for your husband. So file for each of them separately. And um, you know how long that will take? You are, you said 20 and 13? No, 17 and 13. Uh, and your husband? Uh, probably about a year and a half to two years. Okay, thank you. Let's go to Bola in Newark, New Jersey. Bola. Hello, How Brad. Are you? I'm good. Good to speak to you at last. Now, uh, quick one, please. Yes. Um, I filed for adjustment of status in December by yes. marriage. Uh huh. Unfortunately, in December, the, um, I was driving with my international passport, and the police stopped me. When they checked for my insurance, they noticed that um, the they said insurance was falsified. Apparently, because you know, I didn't have. Um, I'm not a citizen. I couldn't get insurance by myself, so I got a friend to do it. Unfortunately, the insurance they gave me was fake. I did not know. The police arrested me, but they released me that night. Of course, they took all my details, um, fingerprints, and all that, and um, they gave me a court date. 
A few days later, ICE came to my house and arrested me. So maybe they sent the details to ICE, I don't know. I was in detention for like a week and came out on bond. Um, so when that happened, they've not, they've not given me a new date for the court date, which should be in a few days' time. Um, good enough, I got my social security card a few days ago. Right. I waited for my work authorization. What happened with, and, the, uh, what happened with the arrest for the no insurance or the fake insurance okay. and the no driver's license? What was yeah, the result of that? They get, they gave me a court date, which is in like two or three days' time. I haven't been to court yet on that. Okay. So, but in the course of waiting for this, so, I got the social. And you, you, and this is through a marriage. It, through marriage, yes. Okay. So I'm a bit worried or confused, as in because my, I have a, an attorney who has already put my papers together. We've regularized the insurance and the vehicle documents, so he will represent me in court. So I'm just apprehensive on how that kind of thing will go because I don't really know. Then will that affect? my situation now or oh, my question again the, the, the answer is this the answer is this okay I, I don't know what you're going to be found guilty of uh, you may be found guilty of a crime that makes you inadmissible for your green card you may not be so your deportation case is going to be pending the result of your um your uh criminal case assuming you're found not guilty or guilty of a crime that is not inadmissible mm. you'll be able to adjust your status it's what it comes down to Okay so, okay, so let's see what okay. happens with the criminal case. Do not plead guilty to anything until you pass it by me first. All right? Oh, definitely. I would not. Yeah, but right. um, get, getting my, sorry, getting my social security, I got it even without doing biometrics. So how possible is that? Okay. I, got, I, I did my biometrics after I got it. Because the dates they gave me for biometrics, I was in detention. I couldn't go for it. I, I, don't, know, I don't know why, but if you come see me, we'll figure it out. Okay, thank well, you. Hold on one second. Let's go to Samantha in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Hi, Brad. Good How evening. I'm good, thank you. Um, I have two questions yes. for you. Um, I filed my, I got married and I filed my um, 485 and 130. In 2017, I got arrested in 2018 because they said I was driving with my international driver's license. Right. All right. Let me let me tell you let me tell you with international driver's licenses because this is the second call in a row with international driver's license. It is not legal to drive with an international driver's license more than ninety days after your entry into the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So if you are in the U.S. for more than ninety days and you're driving with an international driver's license, you're driving mm -hmm. illegally. Uh, now the fact is, if you 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 live in Fort Lauderdale, but if you lived in New York. You can get a driver's license now, what, no matter what your status is. Oh, okay. And what happened now um, was um, I got my, I did my interview in 2019. Uh-huh. And they approved my 130. But I have a court date now in April. So um, what, do you know what's going to happen at that court? Uh, I don't know it's what's going to happen. Court. Okay. This is for deportation? Yeah. So if it's, if it's deportation you're married to a u.s citizen yeah okay you I, did you file an i-130 already you filed in 2018 yeah, i filed right? it before i filed it from 2017 and we got our interview i got arrested in 2018 and, I, and we did our interview in 2019 and they approved the 130 but the guy said he couldn't approve the 485 because i have to go to court is the case still pending yeah. Okay. So what's going to happen is, is the judge is going to postpone your deportation case until your criminal case is resolved. My, um, I already went to court and everything for the the the, um, the driving thing. And, I went to court and and I did a no law, no content um, thing. That's a, that that's, a, that's a guilty plea. What did you? What what was it? It was the driver's license thing. I don't know what the driver's. I, I you're, you're asking me, okay. There is, there are, there are legal consequences to pleading guilty to to anything in a courtroom, okay. Mm -hmm. And the best information you're giving me is the driver's license thing, okay. There's no no low whatever to a driver's license thing. This is basically what you're saying, right? Because when I I went when the when the officer um I got locked up for a day. All right, Samantha, for... this is this is what you need to do. Okay, if okay. you're at you're in deportation, which is a very serious thing, uh, take it seriously. 
You can right. get deported. You know what deportation means? They want you out of yeah. America. So, I know. so you can't be calling on the show and say uh, the the driver's license thing. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is this now. You need to show me your disposition, have a consultation with me, and then I will tell you if you have a problem or not. And then if you do have a problem, how to solve it. Hold on. Let's go to uh, Rosetta in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Rosetta. Hello, this is Rashida. Oh, Rashida, Sorry. excuse me. What's going on? It's okay. So I have a question. I'm in the middle of the um, doing the K-1 visa with my fiancé who's right. in Jamaica. And I was on some of the, like, discussion boards, and it came, came across the question about, I, I guess, like, the medical and, and marijuana use. He does not smoke marijuana now, but he has smoked in his youth. He's like old. Well, not old, but, you know, he's a grown was, man was now. He, was he found, was he ever arrested for smoking marijuana? No, no, never arrested, never. Right, so, then, he has so, no so, so, he, so he smoked marijuana 50 years ago, and now he doesn't. It's no big deal. Okay, so if they ask him if he's ever smoked. When he was, he, when he was 15 years old, if he's 65 now, I think you could say the last time I smoked was when I was 15. They'll give him a drug test and it'll be fine. Okay, so he won't get an automatic one-year ban for admitting to it? For smoking marijuana 50 years ago? Right, that's what, that's what I was reading. They said that if you admit to it, no matter how long ago it was, it's right. an automatic one-year. Have, 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 have a consultation. Hold on one second. Thanks for watching. For more Brad Show Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.